Hello and welcome. Welcome to this week's episode of Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are on this beautiful planet of ours. And um, yes, let's get straight on into the content. Uh, yeah, to, um, I had a, a rather lovely workshop up in Twickenham last Sunday. Um, and it was nice to, yeah, it was nice to be in person <laughs> with people. I, I, I got used to teaching online um, since, well, I, I was doing it before COVID. So, so when, uh, when the lockdowns happened, I was, I was kind of in my element because um, uh, I got very familiar with teaching online already. And um, yeah, I find it a very good medium for teaching because, uh, you know, in person, and th this is the thing I remind myself of when I, when I uh, did the workshop on Sunday, is in person I can do some hands-on and give people the experience because it's, you know, it's hard to um, apply what I'm talking about to your own body and, until, um, unless you already have that frame of reference. And uh, if, it's, if it's not the way you think and move already, then it's hard to find. So, um, so yeah, I, I was reminded of the wonders of hands-on. <laughs> Um, people really enjoyed it. But anyway, yeah, the reason I'm saying that is because um, we went very deep and uh, got into all my usual deep stuff related to the breath and support and relationship to earth and space. Um, but um, when, just, to, just to finish things up, I, I had a go, um, I, I worked with straightforward forward bend, the humble forward bend. And um, I, just out of curiosity, I asked people to have a go and they did forward bend like they were doing a yoga class. And then I offered them this alternative. So I thought I'd share that with you today. The humble forward bend and how to make it um, easy. I mean, um, you know, a lot of people do forward bends in order to stretch their backs to uh, and to stretch their hamstrings. Um, but... You know, why would your hamstrings be in the way of your forward bend? Um, why would your back be in the way of your forward bend? Well, it's because of the way you're doing it. <laughs> the, the, trouble, the trouble with forward bend, forward bending, is that when you do it to your body, you know, when you're trying to achieve an effect on your body, um, then you do it in a way that gives you the experience that you have. And most people, when they are off gravity, so in the journey to forward bend, you have to hold your weight up somehow. So a lot of people will pull their sit bones down. They won't know that they're doing that as they sort of lean their back weight, weight back over their heels and then they'll feel restricted in their movement. Um, so, and they think that it's their backs or their hamstrings that are getting in the way, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are getting in the way, but that's because you're asking them to carry your weight, right? So um, a simple solution is don't ask your back and your hamstrings to carry your weight. How do you do that? Well, the, the thing I was playing with on Sunday was, was so simple. Instead of doing forward bend, what would you do to pick something up off the floor? How would you do it? What, what's the easiest way of doing it? You just bend your legs, you'll get down to the floor, and you'll pick the thing up. It, it, and so if, if the purpose of forward bending isn't to stretch, uh, to stretch you, it's to reach the ground, to be able to pick something up, make that your intention and you'll move much more naturally. So just try that a couple of times. Uh, I'll take you through what I did with the group. So just see what it feels like just to sort of reach down to pick something up and then pick it up. Okay. And you'll find that that's more to do with letting, letting your weight go than it is um, lowering your weight, trying to do a forward bend. Do you see what I mean? Uh, when you do that first version, you, you, you'll notice, you know, there's strain on your back and your hamstrings are have, having to be tight to carry your weight as you reach. Um, and it goes with a kind of caution, I suppose. But if you're just, you just see a, a 20, quid, 20 pound note on the floor, and you want to pick it up, you just go down and pick it up. And if you do that, then you'll move more naturally. So that's the starting point, is to change your intent. Um, 
mechanics of forward bend is it's, it's uh, the movement to bend forwards. Um, if you don't want to carry your weight as you go, which is the thing that makes you stiff, you want to be able to let go of your weight. So, so how, how do you do that? Well, you let go of your weight with your hips. You, you dip with your hips, which is why some, some people teach that, you know, before doing a forward bend. Um, it's, you know, all this, all this stuff, it, it's all causing problems because it's not natural. Um, but if you, the, the reason it's taught in the first place is because the way you forward bend is by folding the hips. So that, that's what you need to work out. And here's, here's a very simple way of releasing back in the hips as well as just letting go of your weight so you can reach the ground. But what you do is you trust the fronts of your feet. Okay? You trust the fronts of your feet. And if you can feel supported by the fronts of your feet, you take a breath. And when you release the breath, you can kind of release back in the hips to allow the heels to drop as you reach the ground. So try that again. So take the weight onto the fronts of the feet, feel supported and relaxed in your body if you can. Take a breath and you move with the exhale. As you release the breath, you release your weight back through the hips onto the heels. Okay. So I don't mean sitting back and then folding. That'll make you catch your weight. It's a single movement. Feel supported by your feet, so you're trusting them and relaxing. Take a breath and then when you release, you release back through your hips to reach the ground. That's, that's the action of bending forwards. Um, it's not a forward bend yet, because um, when you get there, you want to feel supported. If in that journey, if you make it too slow, uh, you'll catch your weight with your back. You can make it slow if you want, but um, to do so, you will need to find support from your breathing gear. You'll need to find support from your core. So try this, we'll do the same experiment, take the weight forwards. This time, I'd like you to kind of draw your belly back and that will pull you down a bit, that will pull you down. Draw your belly back, see if you can breathe with the belly drawn back, which means you have to relax your, your back. And then when you release the breath, the belly will be supporting you because um, it's already drawn back. Um, you want to breathe into your back, you want to breathe into your pelvic floor, but the, the, I'm trying to get the core to support the spine from the inside as you breathe. Then when you release the breath, you can release the hips back and get close to the ground. So, same thing. Take weight through the fronts of the feet. The only thing we're adding is we're creating a bit of central space before you move. Um, that space, you usually rob yourself of that space when you breathe, uh, if, you, if you breathe into your belly, and that'll make it hard to forward bend. So, if you have the belly back and breathe, try and get the breath into your lower back, try and get it into your pelvic floor. Then when you let go of the breath, you can let go of your hips, back to the heels, and you'll find that the belly coming back kind of pulls you down to the ground. Okay? <laughs> So now I'm going to make it more involved. Instead of you lowering your weight, um, which is something you do quickly, if you want to do it more, uh, if you don't want tension, uh, if you want to do it more in a more uh, controlled fashion, I suppose, then you need, instead of uh, lowering your weight in order to move, you need to draw yourself together. Um, if as you're on the fronts of the feet, you kind of pull yourself into the ground. So the feet draw up and that pulls the heels down and it pulls your hips back and it pulls your core up. So if you create that intention to pull yourself to the ground with your legs, basically, then that creates the core response before you move. So if you can breathe whilst pulling yourself towards the ground, and then when you release the breath, you can do the same thing. You can drop the hips back through the heels. So you should be finding that forward bend is getting more and more simple. And coming out of it um, should be more and more 
simply a decision to drop your weight through your heels. So there's no effort. Um, we're getting there. We're not there yet. <laughs> if you've got these things choreographed, it's not lots of things to do to your body. It, I'm just trying to awaken different ways of you relating to what you're doing. So instead of lowering your weight, which will kind of make you want to catch your weight on the way, otherwise it's kind of chaotic, you decide to get closer to the ground and you do that by pulling yourself towards the ground with the feet, with the core, and you allow the hips to relax back. So when you, when you get there, you fold it without having to carry your weight with your spine. And um, yes, the knees are slightly bent, which brings me into the last part. The last part is you, when you get there, you want to be supported by where you touch the ground. So that involves um, using your feet. So if you draw yourself together, as in pull yourself towards the ground with the feet, core draws back, take a breath, see if you can work out how to breathe whilst doing that, you'll breathe into your back, so your back can relax. When you release the breath, the hips fall back as you drop to the ground. When you, when you let the breath go, and you're close to the ground, and, and it's the, core, the feet and the core working together that gives you something to rest into. So that togetherness of inside the feet and inside the core means you can relax the weight of your spine and it won't feel heavy. It'll be hard for your legs, but it won't feel heavy. The, the feet and the core means your knees won't suffer as well. But if you want to feel supported there, take a breath with that feeling of being supported. So you drop your weight into your feet to breathe. And then uh, because the core is involved in support, your breath will come in to support you in space instead of just filling your belly. When you release the breath, that's the time to plant the feet down. From the scrunched up feet to the open feet, planting the ball of the foot down as you let the breath go. And you should find that that action, instead of it pushing you, you away from the ground, it supports your core, your chest and your throat so that you can relax the weight of the head without it feeling heavy. And it will rely on this breathing relationship to where you touch the ground. This uh, gathering in will bring you close to the ground and allow you to relax your weight. The opening out, do your best not to actually lift, but the feet going down will feed up into you to give you support through your core, into your chest, into your throat and even into your face. So it feels like you can relax your weight down into that support. It's to do with the breath. So every inhale, if you don't want to keep scrunching up to open out, every inhale, if you want to stay in, in the posture, you have to be able to let your weight go through your feet. So your feet have to catch your weight. And then the core and ribs are supported, so your back is supported. And when you release the breath, you can release, just re release the breath inside of yourself. And with that, you can give yourself a sense of dropping your base away from you. So, to make it work, gather yourself towards the ground with your feet. You can do it with your hands as well, so that your neck relaxes. See if you can breathe with that by dropping your weight. When you release the breath, you can open out your feet and use them to support the core back, to support the chest back, to give to support the face back so that the spine can rest into the support. Then you have to learn how to let go of your weight into open, strong legs, through open, strong legs into the feet and the ground. So you let go to allow the breath whilst being supported. And then if you've got that, when you release the breath, you just let go because you can let go of your weight away from where you release the breath. The release of the breath is inside of you as you drop your weight through your feet to end up relaxing. And 
uh, coming out of it is a similar kind of thing to do <sighs> except all you do is you intend to drop the weight through the heels a bit more as you let go of the breath So, <laughs> the whole thing together, instead of trying to stretch your hamstrings and stretch your back to get there, you take a breath, you're in one piece, and instead of holding yourself up, you bring yourself close to the ground. Take a breath, close to the ground and rest it in your weight. Then you support yourself with your feet. And that whole process should mean that nothing is heavy on the spine. In fact, the base of the spine can sit quite comfortably through those feet, whilst the feet are supporting up through your hips and your core and your ribs. So the base of the spine can sit through those feet so you feel light without having to hold yourself up. The feet using the ground supports in front of you so that the rest of the spine feels supported all through letting go of your weight to breathe letting go of your weight away from you as you release the breath inside of you there's no holding but there's no heaviness if you decide to move it's just where you put your weight that will decide to bring you up And the release of the breath away from you will release your weight away from you so that you are free of weight. You come up. Okay? The humble forward bend. Something that we're doing every day to some degree. And, uh, you know, I, I use my yoga to um, make my life better. <laughs> So those days when I feel, feel my age and um, I'm waddling around, waddling around the house and making dad noises as I get up, I can remind myself how to move. I, I, I need to use, I need to let go of my weight instead of haul it around, like a, instead of hauling my carcass around, I need to be able to let go of my weight to the ground and then use the ground to support me. And if I do that, then I have a lightness and a strength, a central strength that leads to lightness in space. And um, it's through the rhythms of breathing. So post postures become um, a kind of uh, things to explore, uh, not for the sake of doing the postures, but for looking, looking for nature, looking for um, what you need in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, I'll just <laughs> show you another example. Uh, um, Tri triangle pose. Um, it's bonkers what people do because they're trying to stretch the body. You know, they do all this sort of stuff. Okay? Um, no. Try a single step. Do the same thing. Draw the core up. Let the heels drop back. Take well. Uh, draw the core up. See if you can breathe. Supported by the fronts of the feet, so you relax. And then when you release the breath, you can fold at the hips and you can pick up that fiver that's on the floor. If it's stuck to the floor, you can use your feet to help pull it away from the ground. And you should find that it's a much more natural kind of experience of triangle pose. <laughs> so just a, another example to uh, make sense of what I'm offering you. And so yo yoga postures uh, are not for you to get good at yoga postures. That's not the point. Um, they're, they're there to challenge you to find ease in what you do. And if your body doesn't feel easy, it's not your body's fault. It's the way you are using your body that makes it difficult. So changing the way you use your body, very difficult thing to do. It's much clearer, and much more obvious um, if you, uh, to change the kind of intention behind what you're doing, you know, stretching your body to do some, to be able to do a posture is a bit, of, is a bit of a strange thing to do, but finding better ways of getting closer to the ground to pick something up, is going to be far better for you than 
pulling on the tissue around your structure to try and stretch it so you can reach and carry your weight at the same time. It's, it's uh, yeah. Anyway, shifting, sh uh, changing your mind. Changing your mind is far more powerful than doing anything to your body. And uh, I hope you had some sort of nice experience that um, helps you recognize it. Okay, I uh, hope that was useful. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got my usual Saturday morning workshops. Um, one this Saturday, 10.30 to 1. I, I usually have some sort of theme going on. Um, and if I know what the theme is, I, I let people know and they mail out. Um, but uh, workshops are always kind of organised around the needs of the participants. And uh, whatever theme I've got going on will be relevant because I'm always, it's always principle based. It's always around um, nature. And we're all... We've all got, but we've all got bodies that are based on nature. So my themes never, well, always assist people in what they want. So you can turn up, and if you get on screen, then I can interact with you, and you can get a direct solution for whatever you're interested. In. Okay, that's uh, Saturday. Um, it's at most Saturdays. Other than that, uh, anything else I've got to mention is uh, Tuesday. McNeil and myself uh, are running a. Uh, uh, once in a lifetime, well, last time in, in a lifetime, we, um, yoga holiday next year in Turkey at Huzur of Odyssey. It's the last time that the venue is going to be available. Uh, we, we, we did it years ago, and then um, what with COVID and other things, we, 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 we stopped doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a blast for the, uh, from the past for those that have been before. It's a wonderful place. It's a, it's, Oh, it's got it's got a lovely swimming pool, beautiful grounds. Uh, it's up in the hills in Turkey near a village called Gerçek, and um, yeah, always uh, fabulous things happen there. And Tuesday teaches in the morning. She does more of a um, more of a, st a structured class, although she's a long term. She's worked with me for a long time, so she uh, tries, she kind of incorporates um, my work in more of a kind of a more normal yo a yoga class, but. Um, I don't know, things are changing for her as well, so I don't know how she teaches these days. I've not experienced it recently. Um, uh, but anyway, she does the mornings and I do the afternoons where I kind of uh, help unpick any complications. And that's July next year. I know it's a long way off, but it's, um, it, it's a one-off. Uh, it's not going to happen again. So um, if, you, if you would like a week of working with me, me and, um, and Tuesday, because Tuesday uh, offers a nice sort of structure to work around, then, um, yeah, yeah, you need to get in contact with Tuesday McNeil and book yourself a place on this retreat, which is next year. Okay, uh, that's, that's all I have to share with you. I um, hope that was useful. Please tap the like button for me. Next, whoops. <laughs> whoops, I didn't mean to ding, ding off yet. Um, yeah, please, please tap the like button for me and to let me know you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah. I shall see you the same time, same place next week. Much love. Bye now.